So we want to calculate the exergy of a concrete block given a temperature and pressure for that concrete block. So the mass of the block is 3 kilograms. It is concrete. The initial temperature is 80 degrees C and the initial pressure is 4 bar. The system is at rest, so the concrete block isn't moving. And it's at zero elevation in the reference environment. The dead state temperature is 20 degrees C, which is 293 Kelvin. And the dead state pressure is one bar, which is 100 kilopascal. We want to calculate that exergy, the current property known as exergy, in units of kilojoules for this concrete block. So exergy is going to be the mass times U minus U naught plus P naught times V minus V naught minus T naught S minus S naught plus any initial kinetic energy, lowercase ke because I have the mass outside, and lowercase pe for potential energy. From the problem statement, the potential energy is zero. And the kinetic energy is also zero. True? OK. So now the goal is to say, which properties do I know? Well, I, I know that it's three kilograms. And I need to calculate kind of like group one, group two, and group three. You know, what, what is the, this delta u, u minus u naught, for this problem? So this is the internal energy of the concrete, the specific internal energy, at that temperature of 80 degrees C and pressure 4 bar, right? So how do I, how do I calculate that? All right, let me uh, pause for a minute and, and let you um, think about this and write down some things, and I'll, I'll go around and check you. So what you do is you find that concrete is a solid. And in Thermo 1, did, what, what, what did we learn about things like liquids and solids? OK, I'm looking for another one. How about incompressible? They're incompressible, meaning that you can increase the pressure, but what doesn't change? The volume. The specific volume is constant. So right away, what group of these terms is easy to determine and is equal to zero. The middle term, two, because V minus V naught. So the concrete starts at 80 degrees C and four bar. It has some specific volume. We don't know it. It's a reciprocal of the mass density, so you could look it up in the table. But when it goes to 20 degrees C and 100 kilopascal, it doesn't change volume. So what does this term that's equal to zero so the whole middle term is zero. Got it? True? It's incompressible. All right. Now, how do I calculate the change in internal energy for incompressible substance? Hey, let's use that specific heat. True? So that's going to be C T minus T naught. Is that true? Is Yeah. And then over here we have D minus T naught. Now I need to calculate the change in entropy. How do I calculate the change in entropy of an incompressible substance? You have to reach back way into your recesses from thermo 1 and recall specific heat natural log of the final temperature. It goes from uh, to initial temperature, but here we're going from S to, I mean, S naught to S, so it's T over T naught. It's, it's like this is from initial S1 to final S2. I know that, that S0 is our dead state and it's our final, but when you have a delta S, there you go. Hopefully that's understandable. So what you can do is you pull out that specific heat and you're left with T minus T0 minus T0 times natural log of T over T0. True. And so for concrete, we had uh, three kilograms. 
What was the specific heat you found for concrete in that table? 0 0.880. What are the units on that? Kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. <laughs> All right. Now we have T minus T naught. So it's 80 minus 20 degrees C minus T naught, 293 Kelvin. Natural log of T, which is 80 plus 273, <clears throat> divided by T naught, 20 plus 273, or just 293. Okay, I'll always get a question like this. Professor, I'd like to cancel these units, but how can I cancel a degree C with a degree Kelvin? The difference, temperature difference is precisely the same. The size of one degree C temperature change is exactly one degree K temperature change. That's why you can cancel them. It's a temperature change. Okay. All right. This one, this other t converting, ca canceling Kelvin and Kelvin, that's great. But why do we have to put in here? Why can't we put in uh, 20 degrees C right here? Because, hey, you said degrees C cancels with degrees K. But that, this is a temperature difference. Can you see it? 80 minus 20. This was just the temperature. <coughs> And when it's just the temperature, you have to have the absolute scale. That is very subtle. No matter how many classes I teach or even what level I teach, I have to re-explain that concept. So please struggle with it. You'll be far ahead of your colleagues if you get this concept down, especially when you go to heat transfer, which is another class that you'll have to take. Yes, sir? So I guess it would just be easier just to more initially just you're absolutely right. And then what you'll find is you'll go on a longer path and you'll get to the exact same result. So what you do here is you say, look, it, I'm going to put 80 plus 273, and then I'm going to have minus 20 plus 273. I convert the 80 to Kelvin to 20 to Kelvin. But you can see that that conversion goes away. I mean, if you have issues where it's go slow. Yeah. Make sure you grasp the difference. But... After a while, you'll be able to say, oh, in this case, it's a temperature difference. One degree C change is exactly one degree K change. Yeah. Okay, and then you can compute the final answer, chase your units, and I think you get 14.3 kilojoules.